Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about multiple combo boxes for the same field. Why would you want to do this? What's the benefit? And how do you set it up? So this is a handy trick that I do once in a while, especially if you want to set a value for, let's say, a customer in some form, let's say an order form or an appointment form or whatever. But how you find that customer might be different based on the situation. For example, let's say you're putting orders in the system, okay, and you open up your order form, okay? Now here I can pick the customer with this customer dropdown, but it's only got last name, first name. What if I might also want to look up the customer by their company name or their phone number or address? Depending on your business, it might be different, right? If you run a delivery business, you might often look customers up by their address, what street they're on, their phone number, who knows? So what you can do is you can bind multiple combo boxes to the same field, but look up the stuff differently based on what you put in the combo box. So here in my tech help database, for those of you who are familiar with it, I added a company name field. So we might, might want to also look up customers by company name. We could look them up by their address. We could look them up by their phone number. Okay, so how would we set this up? Well, I've already set up a customer last name, first name queue, which I showed how to do this in the blank template. This is where you take two fields and concatenate them together. If you haven't watched this video, go watch this now. It's how I build this basic template database. There's a link to it right there. Go watch that, you'll have fun. And also watch the invoicing video as well. It's where I make the order form. And I think I put the combo box together in the invoicing one. So back to the database, this query is the key. This is my customer last first. So I got the customer ID and then the last name, first name. You could also do one for first name, last name if you wanna sort that way, right? But this is basically what I see in that combo box, right? Remember we're storing a customer ID in the order table. Right, that customer ID is what our combo box actually picks. The second column is just what's displayed for the user, and you can have multiple displayed columns if you want to. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna set up another couple queries that have what we wanna see in this box, but they're all gonna be picking a customer ID and saving the customer ID in that record in the order table, right? So let's make another query, create, query design, I'm still gonna use the customer table. I'm gonna bring in the customer ID. And then what do you wanna see in the box? I wanna see the company name. And if I run that, this is what that will look like. Now I wanna avoid blanks, right? There's no sense in having blanks in here. So we'll just come down here underneath in the criteria and say is not null. And there's a list of my companies. Now the combo box will take care of sorting it. So you don't have to sort the query if you don't want to, but you can, if you wanna use it other places. Okay, so save this as customer company queue. Okay, and let's say also you wanna be able to look them up by phone number, we'll do three of them. So again, create query design. Can you do this without making multiple queries? Yes, of course you can if you know your SQL, but I'll keep this, I'll keep this video simple. If you know SQL, yeah, you don't need to make multiple queries. You can just change the SQL, it's in the combo box. But we'll keep this so everyone can do it. All right, so this will be the customer ID and then their phone number. Now, you might also want to have first name and last name in here as well. So when you run this query, you'll see that in the box when it's closed. But when you pick that one, you'll then see Deanna Troy when the box is open. So you'll know for a fact that's her, right? Customer phone queue. And let's get rid of null values. Come down here and say criteria is not null. And if you want to sort it, you can sort it like that. Save that, customer phone. And let's also put in the customer company queue, let's also put um, first name and last name in there as well. All right, so when you run it, you'll see, okay, Beard Co., oh, that's, that's Will Riker. Okay, so now we got three different queries, and now we can put two more combo boxes on our order form. Now watch what happens. Let's go in here, design view, and it doesn't matter if this is an order form or an appointment form or a service ticket form or whatever. You're basically giving the user three different ways to pick the same customer. I'm gonna make this sub form a little smaller so we can fit those other combo boxes here. All right, you ready? Here we go with some combo boxes. Now, if you've never made relational combo boxes before, 
Go watch this video. It's free. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. I think this is a prerequisite from the invoicing video. So if you watch that, you've watched this. Anyways. And yeah, lots of people tell me, hey, why do I have to jump around and do so many different videos? Well, because these are tech help videos and fast tips. This isn't my full course. My course is designed in order. So you watch step one, step two, step three, step four, and you have to bounce around. That's why I package it as a course. But for these tip videos, well, you got to know this to know that. So I'll give you the links to the videos if possible. But okay, let's go ahead and find a combo box. Where are you? Right there. And this will also work with list boxes, by the way. All right, drop that there. And let's do the, uh, let's do the company name one first. So find the values in a table or query. What table or query has the data? Well, customer company queue. Okay. What fields do you want to see in the box? Bring them all over. Okay. Next. What do you want to sort by? Let's sort by company name. And if you want to add multiple sorts, you can go then first name and then last name, whatever. Okay. Next. Now, this is what the columns in your combo box are going to look like. Normally, if this was based on a table, you'd see a little checkbox here that says hide the key column. But since your combo box is based on a query, you don't get that checkbox. You got to hide this manually. Just make the width zero. Grab it right there and go click, drag, and make that zero width. All right? It's still in there. You need it to save the value. Okay? But you don't necessarily want to see it. So there's that. This is the first column is visible when the box is closed. And then you've got these two that will pop up when the box is open. All right, next. Which field is the bound field? Which field do you want to save? Customer ID. We're picking an ID, right? Next. We're going to store that value in the customer ID. Next. What label would you like for it? We'll put company in the label. All right, so there we go. So I'm going to use a little format painter here. So click, format painter, click. Just make this guy black. Slide that there. Slide this this way. Okay. And there we go. Now we got two combo boxes that both say customer ID in them. Let's make sure they each have unique names that are good names and not combo 14, right? This one's customer combo. This one's going to be company combo. Okay. But if you look under data, they're both bound to the control source. That's customer ID. So what does this look like? Well, watch this. Open it up. Let's uh, let me actually let me open it from out here, um, because the customer form will only open up that customer. I'm going to open up the blank one and go to a new record. Okay. Now, if I pick a customer from here, boom, it automatically fills that one in. But if I want to change this, I want to look for someone else by their company name. I change it to that. Boom. Look at change the other one too. See, both of those combo boxes are bound to the same field. If you change one, you change them all. All right, one more. Let's do another one. All right, drop this down. Combo box, put it there. Next, queries, customer phone queue. Next, bring over all the fields. And we're going to sort by phone number. Then if, you shouldn't have two phone numbers that are identical. But, I mean, unless you don't have it indexed. Sometimes that happens. All right, shrink that down. Close that. Shrink that. There we go. Next, customer ID is the bound field. Store it in. Again, same thing, customer ID. Next, and then phone. Okay, a little format painter action. All right, slide you up there. Slide you right there. And now we got three fields that are all based on the same thing. All right, save it. Close it. Now when I go to create an order, right, I go to a new blank order. Uh, I get the other customer comes in and you know, if it's a walk-in and you got 5,000 customers in here, the easiest thing might be, what's your phone number, sir? Okay. Come in here. Five, five, five. And it goes right to that one. Then you can drop the box down if you want to. And then, oh, are you James Kirk? Yeah. Okay. Boom. There you go. You see, you could do one with address. You could do one with email, whatever you want to search by. This saves you a step from making a big search form. We have to try to find the customer first. Then you can make an order on them. You could just put multiple combo boxes on the order. So you can change this here and it changes everything. Okay. That's the difference between controls and fields, right? Fields are in your table back here. These are, these, these are fields. Okay. And a field comes into your form into a control. The control is bound to a field and you can have multiple controls in this case, combo boxes that are all bound to the same field to make your job easier.
Okay? See how that works? Cool little trick, right? I've done this a couple times in the past in some, uh, in some databases I built for clients. I don't think I've covered this in any of my classes, though. So see? See, sometimes, even if you are one of my regular students and you watch all my classes, another reason for these tech help and tip videos is to cover weird stuff like this that doesn't necessarily fit into one of my other classes. So there you go. <laughs> so there's your fast tip for today. And I hope you learned something. And sign up and become a member and learn lots of more cool stuff. All right, thanks. We'll see you next time. Take care. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.